Good morning. Welcome to our uh, session on emotions. I um, every every time we we get ready to teach, I just feel like such a huge uh, amount of gratitude for the opportunity to learn more and to just feel it uh, in my life as well. Please know that we're not teaching these sessions because we have become experts and are now at a you know elevated state. Although you'll feel like you're in an elevated elevated state, hopefully after we go through some of these things. I feel like we're always on the verge of like understanding ourselves more. But if we don't do that deep, um, you know, dive into uh, researching how we work, um, we never get to that point of mastering, which is the goal here, right? We're on this earth to like learn to master ourselves and our emotions. And um, so I, we've, you know, we've uh, talked about how we've been doing self-development for like, I, I think we talked like what, Alicia, 16 years ago or something is the beginning of our journey. And um, so I have a lot of information and still struggle with my own emotional state and, and my own emotional awareness. And as I was preparing for this class, again, like the previous sessions, there's just like so much of an unfolding as of like, just, oh my gosh, I've known that I get it. I get it. So learning is a, a never ending process. It's amazing. It's beautiful. Um, I, I love being curious about it because the more I'm curious about it, it's like just this joyful experience of of um, getting to the next place, you know, the next level of awareness. And it's just amazing. I love it so much. I have, I have myself on mute because I have my cute grandkids here. So if I wasn't on mute, you'd be able to hear everything in the background. So um, thank you, Anita, for that introduction. And jumping right into emotions, um, I... Same thing, like I have gone through so much of learning, learning and learning and learning how to manage my emotions. It's a, like, it's just a journey of learning how to be okay or feel my emotions. For the longest time, I didn't feel. And now at the point that I'm at, I know that I allow myself, I give myself permission to feel whatever is coming up. And sometimes there's been moments where something comes up for me. And in that moment, I can't just stop and feel everything. So I do set it aside for a minute, continue on with whatever I'm in the middle of, because sometimes I'm with family or different situations. And then later I go and I process what came up for me because it's not always convenient to just like break down and be like, okay, I'm going to feel this right now. But just having that awareness, that acknowledgement that, okay, this came up for me and I can't just ignore it. I can't let it like step over it and forget about it. But knowing that I'll have to come back to this and either journal or really just allow those emotions to come up and, and be felt. So honestly, just being able to feel like we have the right to feel emotions, whatever they might be. Happiness, like I know we talk a lot about when we say emotions, it's usually like this negative thing of, oh, I need to feel. But also allowing us to be happy and cheerful and not, play, not um, doing it in a small way so that other people feel okay. Because sometimes we feel like we have to, um, oh, I can't be super happy because so-and-so is going through whatever they're going through. And so we don't want to, you know, make them uncomfortable, but we have the right to be happy too. Um, along with feeling everything else, whether we're paranoid about something or puzzled about something or angry or sad. I mean, we have complete permission. And um, along with that, Sometimes we have um, opportunities when people ask us how we're doing, you know, and it's so easy to say, oh, I'm good or I'm fine. And also I know that it depends on who's asking you because you don't want to 
divulge everything to somebody that's not going to be understanding and that's not a safe space for you. But my point is that the words good and fine are not emotions. And so one of the things that I wanted to bring up is this feeling chart. I don't know how many of you have seen um, something like this, but you can Google it. This one I got off of feelingsandemotions.org. Oh, you kidding me? <laughs> Little one. Oh, Bridget, that's my favorite boy. Yeah. Oh, just boy. Talk about emotions. Yeah, talk oh. about. Oh, oh my God. Happy, happy emotions. Yeah. yeah. You. I love he's, you. At the, he's at the tippy top. And um, also with kids, they they show emotions right away. Yes, yes. You never have to wonder if they even if they with me, <laughs> if they're happy or mad or sad, like they're gonna express it. It is that we if if we have um, if our emotions have been halted as a child or even as adults, um, that stops our like our emotional growth, it really does, because then we're not able to express, you know, if we were like, stop crying, stop, don't, you know, whatever it, situation you were in. Um, but even as adults, sometimes when we do express what we're going through and it doesn't get validated or it gets brushed aside, it's so easy to be like, oh yeah, it, my emotions don't matter. And so then we start to shut that down. But coming back to this, um, so feelings at emotions.org. So this is a chart that actually helps you to point out, you know, maybe I'm feeling anxious. Maybe I am um, depleted or frustrated or hurt, um, lonely, paranoid. Like there's just different ones so that if we don't know what it is that we're feeling, because sometimes it's like, oh my gosh, I don't even know why. I feel like this right now. And being able to look at this chart and pinpoint it. And this is also really good for like teens um, because sometimes by that age, they're not aware of what's going on, you know, how they're actually feeling either. And so for them to be like, oh yeah, I am worried or I am feeling two-faced. You know, maybe they're in a battle where they're, being one way with some people and being another way with others. So anyway, this is just a great chart to go to when we are uncertain about where our feelings are, but also not labeling ourselves as I'm good or I'm fine or I'm okay, because none of those words are on here. They're not emotions. Love that. So there's so many powerful things with what you just said, beginning with the first one that you kind of um, just casually mentioned, but it was huge. You said, I used to not feel. <laughs> and then you went on to the next thing. And I was like, no, I, I who has not experienced time in their life? Well, where I'll they share more get... about that later, but yeah, yeah I was just going to. No, I know. I, I just thought that was super powerful because it's kind of like a passing statement, but how many of us have actually spent a time in, in numbness? I mean, I know I have had those times and even years where I felt no emotion. Um, and I think that emotion has a bad rap. I mean, like, you know, they, we often use it as you're being emotional or, you know, like um, that if you experience or, or um, you know, talk about any emotion that, it's it's just coming from a place of unreasonable maybe or something along those lines but emotions are are so real and emotions are important we need to feel them because so often if we don't address those emotions and if we don't process them they come up later as a different form of of ugly that maybe you don't want to be or then you're just like, oh, I'm sorry, that's not who I, uh, you know, want to be or want to represent. But because you're not, uh, you know, being in those emotions and processing those emotions, it comes up as something different. So uh, what I loved that um, 
I, it just resonated with me so deeply is surfing the wave, learn how to surf the waves of emotion. And I love that analogy because I don't know who has ever been to the North Shore on Oahu and felt the power of those waves just start to come up and build and create this massive wall. Like you can feel it in your body, just watching it happen. You feel it in your body because it's so intense because the ocean is so massive and you're just like, how does the ocean do this? You know, but that happens in our own body too. You just feel like this rise and it's a huge, massive wall, you know, like wall of emotions and, and it can crash down on you and it can take you out and it can just drown you, literally drown you. If you don't like, um, able to surf through that, no matter what it looks like. I mean, I think that analogy is so gorgeous, just like picturing yourself, you know, as the, as the surf is coming over and the crest is coming, forming, and you're just like surfing through. And the point is staying on your surfboard in balance, right? Like balancing and being able to surf over that, that massive wave of emotions. I love that because that's how it feels to me, you know? Um, and, and also um, just like, paying attention to those and understanding that emotions are energy, like energy surges that come in of our, into our body and also leave our body. If, if we're doing the mindfulness practice that we've talked about in the previous sessions, if we're like paying attention on purpose, and this is what really hit me hard today was thinking about the fact that I always considered responding to my emotions as authenticity. And it's, it's not, it's not that. So in other words, I'm saying, okay, if I feel angry, well, I'm going to display that I'm angry because that's authentic. No, I, I need to not, um, you know, react or come from a place of just, um, you know, autopilot because I'm angry. And then I express that. No, like I feel anger. Okay. Mindfulness practice. I'm feeling angry. Experience that like feel the anger, surf the wave of your emotion and choose and make a decision, you know, like, do I really need to fire back with anger? Is that going to get me to the next place of, uh, of a, in a relationship, for example, of the next level that I want to be in? Or is it going to continue the same cycle that I've been in for years and years and years because that's working for me is that working for me it's not working for me so let me be mindful of how i want to show up differently so that i can actually um evolve in who i am being as a person or who i'm showing up as and you know one thing that that I also was was just like in my heart today is um, I did that, Alicia, what you said before. Like I would say, stop crying. Or I would say, don't have that attitude with me. Mm, I yeah. raised six children. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that I never gave them the space that they needed to experience sadness and understand, look, life isn't about being happy all the time. And if you're not happy, you're broken. I didn't say that, you know, but that's the message we sent. If we don't, if we don't give space to you're feeling sad, it's okay. Feel sadness, but don't stay there because, you know, I think that we have a misconception that every day we have to feel a certain way. Every day we have to feel happy. Every day we have to feel motivated. If you're not there, you're doing something wrong. Because Susie across the street, she's happy every day. And so what is wrong with you? You know, like get it together. It's just like this shame filled thing. Life, it's not happy, happy, happy. Life is happy, sad, great, not so good. Like, you know, like it's always different. Every day is going to feel different. And what do you imagine? So much. Um, when you were talking about, you know, having that anger come up and not reacting and, you know, kind of processing for a minute, 
I think it's good for us to ask ourselves questions. Mm -hmm. And with our kids, I mean, we've all been through that. I, I remember as a child getting shut down for, you know, whatever it was. Callate. <laughs> <laughs> no, no haciendo esto, you know, just like getting brushed away. And, um, and I know that I did that with my kids too. And so it's, uh, it is a generational thing where we we're teaching our kids. Hopefully we're able to pass on a little bit more healing and a little bit more healing with each generation, because, um, you know, it can be, we, we can be raised in a harsh way if we don't um, if we don't slow down and pay attention to emotions. And it's so important. I'm glad that we are able to um, talk about this today. And every emotion that we feel is giving us information about ourselves and about even about where our soul is, you know, because we we're getting this, um, we're getting those feelings for a reason. And it's a, it's a great reason to slow down and find out why. And I remember now speaking about how I was numb for years. Um, I remember just being so shut down because I, like when I would express a hurt or a pain or something then, like I mentioned earlier, I wasn't validated and it was brushed aside. So for me, it felt more safe to be in denial about my emotions, to not feel, to just let it, like put it in a box and almost just throw it away. I was never going to go visit that again, because what's the point? Nobody's going to listen. Nobody cares. I don't care. I just need to be in survival mode for my kids, you know, to get to each day. Um, but I basically lost simple joys of life, celebrations, happiness, all the things that you were mentioning that Susie across the street, is, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, because I didn't, I like, it was like my light got diminished. Yeah. It got burned out. And so um, I just didn't have enjoyment in my life. And at that point is when you hit that survival mode where um, unless you find somewhere to turn and have somebody that can help you through, which was therapy for me, um, you'll continue. I feel like people will just continue to live that path and kind of gradually go down. Um, so I'm so grateful that I was able to find a program that helped me to realize that there was more in life. But I did wanna share a quote and I did share this on Facebook a while ago. So some of you may have already seen that. So um, sorry if you're listening or hearing it again for a second time, but this quote says, emotionally, I'm done. Mentally, I'm drained. Spiritually, I'm dead. Physically, I smile. Oh, that's so sad. It makes me wanna cry. <laughs> Isn't that so sad? But that's how I felt because I was, all of these things were so heavy, so heavy on me, but I still just had my smile um, until the point that I couldn't do it anymore. So um, emotionally, I didn't know how much more I could take. I really was like, you know, I feel like a lot of people have suicidal thoughts because it, it's just a natural thing to be like, I can't do this anymore. It would be so much easier to just not even be here anymore. And I remember having those thoughts many, many, many times. Um, mentally, I had so much on my plate that I just didn't know how I was going to accomplish the things that I needed to get done with four kids and trying to keep a marriage together. And then church callings and you add, you know, the other things that are, are there for us, but um, just dinner alone every single night. <laughs> dinner oh my gosh that is a chore um, <laughs> all I wanted to do was sleep like I had no energy to want to face the things that I needed to accomplish and then spiritually luckily I did feel spiritually supported in my own way now going to church I didn't want to be there it was so hard for me to be there 
at church and acting like things were okay, seeing other families that seemed great, you know, um, uh-huh. so that was really difficult for me, but my internal connection with God and my savior is what got me through. And I'm so grateful that I had that. I know a lot of people don't have that connection and they feel, um, or they might feel rejected from God or not supported or that he's abandoned us. And so that is work, individual work that needs to be done to see, you know, where, where you can find that spark again, if that's what you want. Um, but then physically, I felt paralyzed, kind of like with that, just wanting to sleep all of the time and um, no emotion, no wanting to move forward, no drive. And I, at that point, was isolating myself. I was so withdrawn. I never wanted to go to lunch with anybody. I got invited to different things. I didn't want to be in public with other people. And I, I just felt flatlined. And I mentioned all of this because that was a dark time for me. And that was years of darkness for me. But I want to contrast that to now. I feel so different. And it is because of the work that I put into healing myself and the support that I needed to be able to get to where I am now. And so um, there is, I, if any of you are feeling that low and that um, depleted and exhausted and feeling like there's no moving forward, I know that I know how that feels. And honestly, like if you can find a support group or a therapist that can work with you to learning how to feel like really, where am I on this chart and why, why am I feeling these things? And what can I do every day to add a tiny bit? It doesn't, I mean, they're all small, small steps, but adding a tiny bit of something for myself each day. Um, sorry, I know I took a long time on that one, but do you have necessary? It's so good, all of it. Thank you. Um, there's a couple things that I just wanted to add throughout when you were uh, talking about, um, for example, that feeling rejected by God. Um, I think it's important to to uh, mention Alicia and I go to a um, a rehab facility where we speak to ladies who are overcoming addiction. And one of the things that I felt so um, powerfully while we were there is to make sure all those ladies knew that um, that they don't have to earn God's love, that they don't have to like make things right before they can have the blessings because God or however you uh, experience the higher power um, has always been there and will always be there to love you and support you as soon as you turn to him. You know, as soon as you say, I'm ready, he's there, boom, you, he, he will always be there. So I I think it's important for, for you to know that, um, it's what I believe. Um, if, if you want uh, scientific proof, there is none. It's just what I believe from the de- depth of my soul, I know. Um, so just, I, I want to um, help you understand that there's something that you can hold to. There's a cord that is filled with divine love and light to your higher power, to your greater good, to God. I mean, that it's there. We're not just walking on this earth alone as individual presences. No, we're connected to something greater. That's why we are who we are. That's why our bodies are designed the way they're designed and our minds are designed the way they're designed and they're designed to feel emotion. They're Mm -hmm. designed to feel sadness and to feel grief and to feel all the, uh, the whole realm of, of emotions. And so I understand that sometimes there's trauma that has happened that's so deep that you actually have to build this massive wall to protect yourself from going back into that place in such a deep way, you know, um, that that you can't manage that emotion. Like, I understand that. But 
but it's important to also um, know that some of those experiences, whether we wanted them or not, um, when you're able to just know that it's not a, anything about you, that it's not anything you should carry as guilt or shame, but that it's an experience that happened to you, but it's not who you are or anything to do with your behavior. It's something that happened to you that you could grow from, that you can learn from, that makes you stronger, that makes you more relatable to somebody who's been through that themselves you know like it actually has good encased in all the trauma to bring forth and make you know help make you uh in alignment with your purpose you know in life and so to be able to manage and and differentiate that is a critical component to learning how your emotions work um, one thing that I think is so amazing is I think that our newer, younger generations like get that we need to feel the emotions. You guys, I feel like even the older generation than us was was built to never, ever acknowledge any negative emotions. Like you don't talk about it, we don't look at it, we don't see it. You know, like just pretend like it's not there. Yeah, it's done. Just forget about it. It's that, and that is like almost a scary, like if, if it's like a horror thing for me, you know, like, but it's there, but we're pretending we don't see it. It's like being caught in a nightmare, I think. And, and I don't blame them. I just feel like, you know, they just, that was their way of, of being like in their minds, like graceful and not talking about the hard things, mm -hmm. but there are hard things. And that's just life. And we are discovering, you know, we even spent time where we don't talk about those hard things. I know I did, you know, and now we're just discovering, okay, but that doesn't work. This is what's real. And this is how we should manage it. But the younger generation, um, I was listening to my kids talk about this, um, this company that uh, makes sweatshirts that say, or t-shirts and everything that say, are you okay? Which gives you permission to talk about, like Elisa said before, uh, with the right person, really what you're going through, because we're all going through that. And I think that's the important thing to understand and acknowledge that we all have those feelings. You're not alone in those feelings. We all have those dark moments. We all have the light moments. We all have the struggles. We're human. We're all human. We all experience the same thing. And I think that that's what trapped me for the longest time is thinking that I alone was evil and dark and broken and all these things like and there was no other human like me we all experience different levels different places of those darknesses and negative emotions and so we have to like just normalize that the lows are meant to be there they serve a purpose and then we experience the joy and that serves a purpose. So back to the wall that we build, Alicia said it too, that because she built that wall, um, you know, she also robbed herself of, and I have as well, the, the light, the joy, the little moments of happiness um, because that wall was built. And so we have to be able to experience those highs and lows both so that we can also experience fully the sadness, fully the joy. Yeah, well, and those sensations that come are sacred messages of intelligence for ourselves intended to keep us aware of what needs our attention. And so if we, if we just like dismiss it, then we're missing out on sacred things that we can learn more about ourselves or about situations that we are continuously putting ourselves into, you know, we need to stop and analyze those things and say, okay, is it worth staying in this space that is not, it, you know, whatever it is, whether it's cycle, huh? Like a cycle. Yes. Like a cycle. And just, <clears throat> 
giving us that attention, coming home to ourselves, which I know that I mention this every time that we <laughs> have a Zoom, but it's important because we, it would be good for us to, um, to look within ourselves instead of allowing somebody else to create our life and our emotions for us. Because yeah. I, I did go through a time where I didn't even know, um, not that I didn't know, but I didn't want to rock the boat of my own um, thoughts on things or opinions about things, um, whether it was political or whatever. I, I just had to be in silence and do, you know, I don't even know how to explain it without being like sounding rude. <laughs> No, I, I understand what you're saying with what you've said and yeah. I'm sure other people do too. Okay, so so I just felt like like my own um opinion or opinions didn't ever matter. Or your curiosity. Yeah. And so I just had to go with the flow, or I just did. I didn't I felt like I had to, but I still chose that, you know. I still chose to be like, oh, we're voting for who? What do we, you know? yeah a thing um and so and it's even hard now for me to be like what do I what where do I stand with different things because before everything was told to me this is what we I don't uh -huh. know I won't go any further but really just coming home to ourselves again and and wondering and asking ourselves where what do I need to learn from this what needs my attention what am I learning from this situation? I, I love that. I think some like a specific question that you can ask yourself is, um, what is the hardest for me to feel? Is it the thoughts or, or what's the hardest to be in? You know what I mean? Is it the thoughts? Is it the feelings? Is it the sensations? Like, like, like doing what we talked about in reflection and just like scanning our body and saying, okay, um, what's the hardest for me? Like, is the sensation so overwhelming that I act out or do I avoid, repress, block out the feelings so that I don't have to, um, you know, go through that because the avoidance itself, well, of course, you know, uh, we just can't ignore unpleasant trees, you know, okay. like we have to be okay with being in that. I feel like one of the, I, I'm so passionate about these calls that we're doing because, you know, like um, going to therapy is is a very Im important um, part if you can get there. But if you are not in therapy, I want to like offer as much of the information so that we can become aware that will be beneficial for the population that maybe isn't in therapy. Yes, therapy will always be in, in, encouraged, but what can we you know, uh, what kind of information or an education can we share um, for those that are not in therapy right now? Um, let's see, I wrote down here, it's not what emotions we feel, but what we do with those emotions that matters. And so I think that if we can get out of today, that whatever emotion we're feeling to give ourselves space for that, you know, like um, you're going to feel different every day, you know, and there was an analogy that was used that I think will work really well because we're all about our phones nowadays, you know, like everybody has a phone and if your phone is on 3%, you're not like freaking phone, I hate you, you know, you're only on 3%, well, it needs a charge, it needs to be recharged and if we're feeling depleted, and we're feeling like we're running on 3%, then we just simply have to acknowledge that we need a recharge and not hate ourselves for working in a depleted state. So we can look at that as, okay, what do I need to recharge? What moments, well, that's a recharge right there in itself. That brought me up. Yeah, it's boom, 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 boom. A sweet recharge. Yeah, that's a good recharge. No, really seriously though, babies kill the soul. <laughs> like you can hold him and just feel like recharged right there because they're so pure in spirit and so much light and energy. It's amazing. But you know, like giving yourself that moment 
like, okay, yesterday I was super motivated. I got a lot accomplished. Today is not one of those days because my body needs to recharge. So giving yourself the space that you need to um, restore, like being okay with not getting anything accomplished, you know, like saying today, I just need to drink a lot of water. Maybe I need to take a nap. Maybe I need to journal. I'm not going to do the laundry today because I'm going to hold space for myself and my needs and what, what will, um, you know, help me uh, show up as a better version of myself. Thank you. So one other thing that I wanted to bring up again, I know that we've talked about this in the other two, but I feel like the more we hear it, the more it will set in our mind and it's a good go-to, but it's the three by three where we take time to look around and see, okay, what is supporting me in this moment? Because when we are having an emotional moment, it it's good for us to come back to our senses to come into the here and now. And so right now it would be my chair. I'm sitting in this chair. This is my support right now. Um, but it could be, you know, when you're in your car or on your yoga mat or outside on the grass, I mean, whatever it is, you find that support. Um, and then feeling your body. So maybe physically touching your legs, touching your arms, giving yourself a hug and, and just becoming aware of your body, how your body's feeling, maybe different sensations that you're feeling. Um, if you are having a difficult emotional time, maybe, you know, seeing where I'm feeling it. Is it in my stomach? Do I feel so sick to my stomach? Am I having a headache because of this situation? Are my shoulders tense? You know, recognizing, okay, where is this? And then finding something for me. I love to use my oils. You guys know that our oils are so powerful. So I will use whatever oils I need to calm that area, but I'm becoming aware of how my body is reacting to these emotions. The last one is our breath and how important our breathing is taking that time to slow down our breathing inhale four counts exhale six counts and every time that you're exhaling possibly allowing yourself to relax a little bit more you know just taking that time to to regulate yourself and just be like okay you know taking that breath in sometimes it's great to put your hand on your heart um, or a hand on your heart and belly to feel the breath in so that you're really just coming back to your self-awareness and um, and then starting from there, starting from that internal sense of, yeah, what is supporting me? How's my body feeling? And where's my breath? I just think it's so important. And I do that a lot when I'm you know, whatever situation I'm in, I like to go back to that. It's my, it's so easy because I have all those things with me at any moment and I can regulate myself to a better situation. <gasps> yes, I totally, totally. I mean, like we don't, we forget the immense power in the simple things. Um, like exactly that, just grounding yourself again and in our breath. And we think, okay, five breaths, short. That sounds like it would be good. No, actually do it and feel the result. Like it's so powerful, especially with your oils, you know, just doing that with your oils. The other thing too that um, came up for me was thinking about what you would do for someone who is depressed, someone who is at a very low point. Like what, how would you speak to them? What, how would you support them? How would you love them? Now turn that around and do it for yourself in those moments where you feel like you're experiencing that self-compassion um, is such a powerful thing because I feel like so much we do the opposite. We, we feel negative about ourselves for not being able to handle something or negative about ourselves because we're not in a better state of mind, you know, like self-compassion, self-compassion is so massive too. And so just think of it that way. How would I treat my best friend or my sister? Now I'm going to give that to myself because I deserve it because that's what I need right now. And I need to, you know, give myself that, that grace. Um, is there something else that you wanted to add? No, that I think that I covered 
pretty much everything. I mean, there's there's a lot of information, but I feel like for this Zoom. There is. Just uh, one quick thing that we have done for years is Feelings Buried Alive Never Die, the book um, by Carol Truman. Well, we have uh, used that as a resource over and over again because, uh, did I say resource? I don't even know. I'm talking so fast. I don't know if I said resource, but that's what I meant. And um, so whenever, because I feel like so much of the, the discomfort that we feel in our bodies is because of emotional situations. I also feel like it helps us get to the root cause. So if you're feeling like digestive issues, I go to the back of Carol Kay's book. That's what we, that's what we call her. Um, but, um, and say digestive issues. Okay. Here's the emotions that I'm experiencing. Okay. Uh, that feels right. Then you go to your emotional book, which to me, this is just like such an amazing uh, uh, guide to help us understand what oils we need for those emotions. And then go to that oil and read about what the emotional um, benefits are to that specific oil. Like the, those are just great resources to take the next step, then take the next step and in, in a place of understanding and grace and you know growth um, every time when we're experiencing our emotions and I mean like there is so much more but that's what we have time for today and we hope so much that you were able to benefit from our conversation in some way somehow and just know that we love you and we're always here for you yes thank you guys have a great day have a great week <laughs> yes in two weeks Okay, see ya.